we're going to click on network profiles. And here, uh, I want to just explain what a couple of these things are, and then we're going to set one up. You can, uh, right off the bat, turn on and off a feature called Auto Trunk, which is something that Netgear uh, does a lot of marketing promotion about, basically because you can trunk lines back to other switches. So if you have a bigger network design, and we did this at NAB in April, where we had two fibers that went from each fiber port and it went back to a fiber core. And we did not have to do any configuration for that trunk. The trunk is basically a mass, I mean, for a lack, well, a really weak definition, but basically think of it like a giant pipe where all of the data for all the VLANs goes down. And so that's what it is. And you can link more than one. Well, if you link more than one, then it becomes an auto trunk and the switches will figure that out. So we leave auto trunk on. And uh, if you then take to those two fiber ports and plug them into um, like a fiber core, the core will figure that out, that this is the same switch. Let's trunk those two lines. And then it gives you twice as much throughput and they work together. Okay. So you have on a multi-mode fiber, you have transmit and receive. And so now instead of a one gig in this instance port, you would have a two gig pipe or a two gig trunk. And so uh, auto trunk is actually super easy and it's designed to make it quick, uh, getting these things installed and up and running. I, I will attest to this, by the way, that at NAB, I had probably a dozen switches all coming back to a fiber trunk, which had, I don't know, 16 fiber ports on it. Plus, we were doing a bunch of other stuff with fiber. Well, anyways, we ran two lines back for every single switch, every table, we'll say every zone, and uh, plugged those in. And I did not have to configure trunks. The switches figured it out for me. Super cool, super easy. Strongly suggest that if you're going to do that, like if you're going to have two switches, for example, trunk those things. <laughs> Seriously, trunk them together uh, because that will never be the bottleneck then uh, if you get into that. Okay, so you can do uh, trunking there and then there's uh, PTP residency time stamping. This is in general, just uh, you can leave that off as default for NDI because all of these profiles are specifically made for your application. Now, there's more in here than just NDI, right? Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can leaf through these and figure out which ones that you want to use. But the two that we want to focus on are the NDI4 and the NDI5 profiles. Bird Dog has moved all the cameras to an NDI5, and that is our stable firmware that we are now using. And so we are functioning out of the NDI5 profile, and this is how you would configure any of these profiles, but this is how you do it. So we're going to click on the little cog wheel here next to the NDI5. It says with Dante QSIS. What they've done is they've worked with New Tech. They've worked with Bird Dog. They've worked with uh, QSIS installers. They've worked with a whole bunch of folks, and, basically, and Dante in particular, and figured out how to do all of these profiles uh, and combined it into the same profile. So that's pretty cool. If you click on the cog wheel, uh, this will start to help you configure the switch. Now, what I want to do is I want all of the Ethernet ports on this switch to be on the same enclosed DHCP network. And so we're going to create our own VLAN, which means that, you know, well, it doesn't, doesn't specifically mean, but it means that these ports are going to communicate with each other, but they're not going to interfere if we connect this switch to another network. They're not going to interfere with that network. They're going to keep it isolated, keep it local. And if you're setting up a single 4250 switch for your install, this is the way to do it. Uh, maybe in an advanced course, we're going to talk about trunking between switches and how VLANs can cross through the trunks. But for today's purposes, let's set up a single VLAN on this switch. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to light up each of these ports. You just click on them. Super easy. And uh, we have 10 Ethernet ports on this switch. And two of them, 9 and 10, are non-POE. So these ports are great for non-POE devices. Let's say we have a camera that's plugged in with DC power. Maybe we got a computer. Maybe we got a computer with two NIC cards. Uh, you can plug them both into 9 and 10 and not take up any ports that require PoE. So these switches, this is like an entry-level switch with uh, with Netgear. They get, you can you can pay whatever you want for more sophisticated stuff. Uh, but this this guy right here is one of their, their lower levels and uh, works really well. So here we go. We're going to light up each of these ports uh, with the green check mark. And then I'm going to say, uh, this is my NDI network. Okay, I'm going to call my profile name. NDI network because uh, this will be my install switch. VLAN ID. 
Now, if you're doing multiple profiles on switches, especially across multiple switches, this will be really important. But here we can pick an arbitrary number, uh, number other than one. Okay, don't pick one. But uh, a lot of guys, a lot of networking guys like to work in increments of 10. So they do VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40. And then they know VLAN 20 is Dante, VLAN 10 is NDI, VLAN uh, across the entire network. So in this instance, let's go with 10 because I think that that's, a, that's an appropriate number. This is a customized thing just in Netgear. This color means nothing other than just here on this interface. So pick a color, pick your favorite color, or pick a color that you are going to use consistently across your entire fleet. Okay, that's the basic setup. Now, let's talk about the routing and the DHCP stuff. We're going to flip this switch and turn it green, and it's going to say your VLAN IP settings. So this is the base of the VLAN, okay? The very... Um, well, for, again, a lack of a better term, how you would, for example, contact this switch on this VLAN, okay? So this VLAN is going to have its own DHCP. It's going to have two more than 200 IP addresses. How do we get back to this switch if we're on this network? Okay, so there's a couple of philosophies here. Uh, some people like to use IP address, the last IP address in the pool, which is 254, and some people like to use the first IP address in the pool. If you have a group of switches inside your network, I suggest that you plan to use specific IP addresses that are in sequence, okay? So use 1 through 10, or use 200 to 254, or whatever you're going to do. But in this instance, I'm going to say my network, 192.168, and we're going to call this uh, VLAN. I want it to be kind of unique than anything else that I have in this office. So I'm going to call it 85. Okay, that's that's my NDI network. And I'm going to say dot one. And then I'm going to click tab and it's already done the subnet mask for me, a single subnet. This is proper for NDI and that's why it fills it in for you. Please pay attention to that. That's a really important piece. And then DHCP server. Do you want this switch to act as a DHCP server for this VLAN? And I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to click DHCP server. The default router is this switch because this is the going to end up being the backbone for this uh, NDI network. So dot one is correct. The uh, pool start and pool end. Okay. When your DHCP operates, what IP addresses do you want it to issue? Do you want it to issue everything? Or do you want to reserve a few so that like maybe we're going to get switches online and we want to set them up this way? So let's just say I'm going to have, you know, 10 switches total. So I want to start my pool at... 85.11, okay, so that I have room for 10 switches on my network, and they'll be 85.1.2.3.4, and so on. So DHCP server pool will start at .11, which means that when I plug a device into the network, it should get 85. something, but it will never get 1 through 10. Okay, so we're going to start the pool at 11. We're going to end it at 254. That's appropriate. Now, the DNS server, this is tricky. In my instance, I'm not going to want to access the internet from my NDI network. I have two NIC cards. Actually, I've got like four NIC cards on this computer. One of them is going to be plugged into a network that has internet, and that's going to how I'm going to pipe out my stream to YouTube. But um, if I wanted to get internet on this network, you would need to put probably the, um, the default router the default gateway of the network that this switch is also connected to, so over the fiber ports, for example, uh, the default gateway number of that network that has internet. So in my instance here, that would be 192.168.1.1, okay? But this switch is not going to be plugged into that network, and it's not going to be plugged into the internet. And so you can actually leave this spot blank. It's going to act independently. I'm going to put this switch inside of a Pelican case, and I'm going to put my cameras in next to the Pelican case. And when I show up to a gig, I'm going to put this on a table, plug it into power, let it boot up for two and a half minutes, and then plug in my cameras. The DHCP is going to issue those IP addresses because it's DHCP, and we're going to get off to the races by plugging in my computer to port 9 and 10, which are also a part of my NDI VLAN. So we're going to get two gigs over to my computer, NDI does its own load balancing, by the way. So if you do have two NIC cards on a computer and you plug them both into the same switch, uh, it should, if you have a modern day computer, it should issue two MAC addresses and get two individual IP addresses and so on and so forth. So then I get two gigs back from my switch 
I can plug in my three cameras and bandwidth is not going to be an issue. So uh, that's fine to leave these as blank if you don't plan on connecting these to a greater network that has internet. You don't need to access internet through it and so on and so forth. Okay, so boom, boom. Uh, those can be blank and the search domain can remain blank. The least time in minutes, 240 minutes. Uh, a lot of guys change this to like one day because, you know, they're going to set up today and they just don't want it to change off in a few hours. And so they'll change this to to one day. And and, and what is that? So uh, 24 hours times 60, that is uh, 1440. So you could change that least time to 1440 if you wanted to. Uh, and that would be fine. And now we uh, take our blue button and click apply. We really recommend that you set up DHCP servers. Yeah, I know. But uh, I've already explained why we're not doing that. And so there we go. Okay. We want to be sure that this shows success, success, and does that. Okay. And then we want to roll up here. And just to be safe, I'm going to click save. All right. You have noticed now that there are green ports on my dashboard that show that they, are, they belong to VLAN 10, which is the NDI 5 profile. And uh, if I plug something into there, I should get a um, 85 address. So 192.168.85. something address. And we can actually test that now. I, uh, here's, here is the moment of truth, everybody, because I do have a, uh, a trusty, dusty studio, which still works. And I've got a camera. Now, the camera doesn't show an IP address, but the studio will. So let's go ahead and plug that in and see if I get an 85 address. Now we're plugged into port two and you may be able to see that the POE light turned on on port two. So I know that that's working. And now the network traffic, the actual um, network activity port is also uh, flickering. So that's a good, that's good news. That means the network card is working inside of my studio and it's requesting an IP address. So now we're going to wait and see if my startup changes and gives me an IP address that's in the 85 range. And if it does, then we know that we're good to go with TCP. Now, by default, right, all the BirdDog products are running in TCP. I think maybe in NDI 5, they might switch. Oh, 85. Yay, 85.11. There it is, everybody. So uh, good news. That worked, and uh, we're good to go there. So now we can go back to our, our web UI. That's pretty exciting stuff. And uh, let's go ahead and refresh this page because it's a web UI. Remember that, right? So it's a web UI, so it doesn't live update all the time. And we're going to go to overview. And now we're going to take a look. Port two has a has a green. It's hard to see because my color is green, but it does have a green outline on it, which means that it's connected. Oh, check that out. It shows microchip technology as the host, which is the manufacturer for the chips that were in the studio. It does give us a MAC address. It does give us the IP address that's associated. That's cool. And uh, it shows that it's drawing six watts. And so, and it's running over gigabit. It's not restricted to 10,100. So lots of useful information. It even says that I belong to VLAN 10, which we already know that, but hey, that's really helpful. If you were just uh, new to this, that's a lot of useful information, right? So uh, this little device is running in TCP and we are getting an IP address 85.11. So we could go to that IP address if we want to join this network and, uh, and, and do that. So first is we're all good to go there. Our DHCP... 